I'm gonna show you how to take something like this and turn it into this. Oh, and something like this and turn it into this. Hello friends, today we're gonna take another look at ControlNet within Stable Diffusion. I'm gonna show you how to make any logo into very cool looking art or anything for that matter. It doesn't have to be a logo. It could be an illustration of a skull or a banana or whatever. Let me show you how. Oh, and here's a tip for you. Don't trust atoms. They make up everything. AI. We are going to be using Automatic 11.11 today. And if you don't have that installed, check my previous video on how to install it up here. I'm also going to link how to uh, install ControlNet up here. Uh, now, if you have everything sorted, you're going to get the ControlNet QR code monster model. All the links are going to be in, in the description below. I'm going to go to files and versions here. And you want this one, the safe tensor file and the YAML file. I'm just going to download them by clicking the little arrow here. And then you're going to go into your stable fusion folder, double click extensions here. Then you're going to go into control net models and just drop them straight in there. Once that's done, you're going to see them inside stable fusion here. So you have control net down here and your model is going to be down here. So can either see what we have or you can type QR, you can load the QR code monster. Now, if you don't want to do this locally, you can do it in a cloud as well. You use a um, cloud solution like Think Diffusion, for example. Now, I've prepared some logos here. So I got some logos here and they are black and white, as you can see, and that's necessary, or at least that's going to help us. You can do it without doing them black and white, but just it's going to give you a different kind of result. So let's say that we take the Twitter logo here, for example, we drop that in, then we're going to enable, I'm going to put in pixel perfect. And depending on how you want the image, the preprocessor here can be set to none or invert. And you can press the little explosion here, you're going to see invert. So our image, uh, the logo here is going to be mainly white. If we wanted to keep the black, we're not going to use invert. So that depends on how you want the image in the end. So let's look at that in a bit. We're going to go back up here. I'm going to change this to two Karis. This is not necessary. You can use basically any sampler, but it's a sampler that I like. And I'm going to use it with 25 steps. And we are using a 1.5 model here, as this is control net model is not available in SDXL. And I'm using 512 by 512. And I am using high res fix. But first, let me show you why I'm using the epic realism model, but it, it, it works with any model. So we just put in beautiful landscape paradise island with mountains going to weight that up a little bit with control arrow up and I'm going to load let's load my cinematic styles which are STXL specific but works great with 1.5 as well now we have everything set up to run one image in 512 by 512 and this will not be fantastic and I'm going to show you here so let's start the render if you can see here the logo is coming in fine initially however by the end we've lost most of it you can see the edge from the bird here and back here I mean it's there ish but it's not really working and I've noticed that when you use the high res fix it kind of fixes that so we're going to use high res fix I'm using the NMKDCX200K. You can basically use whatever. If you don't have that, you can use ESR Jan, for example. I'm going to upscale by two. I'm going to do 25 steps and we're keeping the denoising about 0.7. I would say between 0 0.5, 0 0.7 here is pretty good. Now, if we were to render this again with the same seed, let me show you what we get. So we can see our initial or original image coming in and now the high res steps or the high res part of the image start and as you can see the lines are more clearly defined however this wasn't a great image so let's run this for four new images now we'll start in a second render here four new images we will see if we will get enough of a logo in here if we are not i'm going to show you how to fix that and that will mainly be from racing the control weight. We are using a control weight of one now. 
And I've noticed that in a lot of images, it's not enough. It's a little depending on how much of the logo or the input you still want in the image. Here we have four new images rendered and you can see in the first here and the fourth, the logo is clearly defined, but the second and third, it's so, so I would say, and you can make sure that they go even further. And that's by raising the control net. So we're just going to go super high here. We're going to raise this to the max and then we're going to render four new images and you're clearly going to see the change. So you can see here now in all of our images, the bird is now much more clearly defined in these examples. Well, you can see it's the Twitter logo. That's because we raised the control weight up to two. So depending on how much you want or how detailed your input is, well, consider the weight that you might need. Now let's try a different example here. I'm going to load in Mr. Beast logo here. And I've made this black and white because the original isn't. And I'm now not going to use preprocessor here. So what we see is what we get. So now the black part is going to be on the inside. We're now going to try sci-fi building in a cyberpunk neon futuristic world or actually sci-fi. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. I'm going to remove cinematic. I'm going to try instead here, digital art. We are going to run four new images. Uh, we are keeping the control at pretty high. So we have two here. These styles, by the way, they can be found for free in the description below. And for the people that still support me through Patreon, even though that content is free, every little bit helps. Thank you very much. So here we have the Mr. Beast logo as a sci-fi building in a cyberpunk neon futuristic world. And as you can see from the input that we had black on the inside and white on the outside, the images uh, were similar. So most of the content is where this black is. And we got some sky here around, which is uh, pretty cool. Now you don't have to use logos for this. You can use anything. Let's say you find um, a skull here. So we have this image of a skull and we're just going to put in street alley with neon sign. I'm going to choose the cinematic one and I am considering inverting this just to see what we get. I'm going to try both. I think we're going to run two here that are inverted. I'm going to render that. So we actually just got one neon sign and we're going to try to change this. So we're going to lower the control weight here. Let's go at 1.3 maybe. Let's do 1.5. Five, and we're going to say street with multiple shops and neon signs. Busy cyberpunk neon Tokyo street. We're going to raise that up just a little bit. Control arrow up. And we are generating two new ones. And after that, we're going to see if we need to change uh, something else. And I see straight away that we're getting some better results here. That's not just one neon sign. So that's going to be pretty cool. We can see the street coming in here. Now we have a building here with a lot of neon on it and the skull, the, the bones here, there's more lights in the shop and the reflections here in the street. So turning out much better than our first images, I think. And also with the second one here, we're actually seeing something else. It's not a skull, but uh, it resembles a skull. You know what I mean? So here we have it. I think our first one here was actually the coolest one. We can see the outline still a little bit of the skull here in the markings on the road and also on uh, like the lights shining on, on, on the road here. And uh, we can see the lights here are actually from the skull. So cool result. This also kind of nice, even though it's kind of blurred out and you got a car here in the foreground instead. Still very nice. So let's. Uh, Skip the invert here, none, and uh, let's run two new ones and let's see what it does now. So now everything is going to be inverted. Well, inverted from before, not inverted from this one. So here the results are completely different. And I think actually the other ones were better, but uh, still you got to see it. So go out there and create some cool looking stuff. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to change this Apple logo into a beautiful 
landscape. So we're running beautiful Nordic landscape with fjords and mountains and clouds. We're running the cinematic style. I have inverted it so white is on the inside and I raised the control weight to 1.9. I think we're gonna get some beautiful looking images here. And we sure did. We got some mountains here to get the shape of the apple. And we got some dark clouds coming in here and uh, beautiful light clouds and some scenery there in the background. So I'm pretty happy with that. As always, have a good one. See ya.